All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this Wednesday, May 22nd, this is the evening edition. I'm Josh Brown. Well, it's been quite another hot day we had across the entire viewing area. We had temperatures in mostly in the low 90s and some spots in the upper 80s. So it's been, like I said, it's been, it's been pretty another uh, warm day all across Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky with uh, with not a whole lot of rain, but uh, except there were some rain showers in some spots earlier today, basically just to the west and northwest side of uh, Nashville. So for, for places like, we'll say, Clarksville, Paris, and Hopkinsville, you've seen just a few isol isolated uh, showers uh, earlier uh, this afternoon, but for the most part, it's nothing too major. So everybody else got to stay mostly dry, but I, I guess the big story we're going to have to worry about is just the heat and humidity, the humidity that's going to that's going to continue as we head into the rest of this week and even into the Memorial Day holiday weekend. We'll look at the high temperatures in just in just a second on Futurecast and of course on the uh, GFS model. Uh, first of all, let's take a look what's happening uh, currently live on the radar right now here on this uh, Wednesday evening. And as you can see, uh, right now, uh, for the most part, Middle Tennessee's weather looks to be uh, looking pretty dry. So don't expect any more rain in the forecast for tonight. Uh, there are a couple of isolated uh, sprinkles of showers here up towards uh, parts of southern Kentucky, but for the most part, nothing too major uh, to worry about. So if you've if you got any big plans here later on tonight, uh, uh, you should be good to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you this uh, this uh, second system that we're watching uh, really carefully that's back over towards the west here, which... This second system is not going to affect Middle Tennessee uh, this weekend, so I think, that's, I think that's a little bit of good news. But except we're going to have to do with, except we're going to have to do with the heat and humidity, so just please keep that in mind. So as you can see here, here's the uh, second system, and they're bringing some tornadoes again across parts of Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, and Missouri. So yeah, so this is their second time this week uh, that they're dealing with another uh, potential of a tornado outbreak. And so far, there's been reports just east of Oklahoma City that at least one confirmed violent tornado touched down earlier this afternoon. So we take a look. Let's take a look at what's happening. Uh, let's, let's turn on the Oklahoma City radar is what I meant to say here. So we're turn, let's turn on the Oklahoma City uh, radar. Well, actually, the weather service belongs to uh, Norman, which is south of Oklahoma City. So we'll zoom in. So we'll zoom. We'll zoom in a little closer and show you where, where, we're, where we have those uh, big uh, thunderstorms right now. And yes, there is a tornado warning effect right now, just to the northeast side of the OKC area, and just to the northeast of, I believe it's Stillwater. And there is a little bit of rotation right there, uh, just to the uh, southeast side of Ponca City. Uh, so again, this, this, so that's where there's a tornado warning, warning in effect uh, right now. So it looks like there, was, uh, there have been some reports of a tornado so far earlier today across parts of eastern Oklahoma, it's just outside of the uh, Tulsa area. We'll look at the reports in just a second. I want to show you this uh, storm right here that's prompted that uh, warning. And again, I know this is not a, this is not for our viewing area, but I just want to show what's, what, what's just what, like what is happening uh, across parts of the uh, country in terms of severe weather. So, <clears throat> so I just want to give you folks a heads up on that. And again, if you have any friends or families that live either in Missouri, Kansas, or Oklahoma, or parts of North Texas that are in the, that are that are dealing with the, dealing with the severe weather again for tonight, uh, please, I think I think I really appreciate you if you can go ahead and maybe share the feed to uh, to them, so that way they'll know what's going on, or just try to give them a call or just, or send them a text and let them know that uh, they need to be safe out there tonight. There's more severe weather is expected uh, for the plains and parts of the Midwest as we head into the rest of your Wednesday night. So let's move a little closer here and show you where the circulation is. So again, here's this uh, tornado warned storm, and there's a little bit of a hook right there just to the. Um, okay, take a little while to zoom. Take a while to load here. Yeah, it's just to the north of the uh, of the Cimarron uh, Turnpike, just north of 412. That's where we have that uh, big circulation. Uh, we turn on the velocity and show you where we're where we're seeing in terms of winds right now, and show you what's happening. And uh, it looks like. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell to look at the weather service uh, radar, or well, yeah, the weather service uh, Norman radar type on the velocity. So, because I believe this is getting close to out of, to be out of the Oklahoma City uh, viewing area. So, let's turn on the uh, Tulsa radar and see if we can see it a little bit better with the circulation. And a little, yeah, we do see a little bit of some rotation, or actually say the reds and greens a little, a, a little bit here on the uh, Barron Threat Net, and that storm is moving up to the northeast, by the way. So again, there's a produce, so it's producing a bit of some tighter rotation. So see the, all those lights and greens, and like yeah, the lighter greens and the dark reds here. That's indicated that, that there, there is winds coming together with the rotation. So so that's why there are some tornado warnings in effect right now here this evening across parts of Oklahoma, Missouri, and parts of Texas and southeast Kansas. 
So again, if you have if, again, if we have any friends and families that live in those areas that are in the path of this severe weather, which they're expecting for the second time uh, this week, which is tonight, again, uh, it, it would be really great just to go ahead and just uh, share the uh, feed to your you know to your friends and families that live in the Plain States that are in the path of severe storms because they want to know what's going on, and of course, mean to let them mean to let them let them know that um, they need they need to be safe out there tonight since uh, more severe weather is is expected. So that's round two. So round one was actually uh, yesterday and Monday that brought tornadoes across parts, at least in the same areas that are dealing with the severe weather right now. But the severe weather right now that we that, that they're dealing with across parts of Oklahoma and Texas, uh, southeast Kansas and Missouri, uh, that's round number two. So and a lot of people do not want to do not want to hear uh, hear the threat of tornadoes in the forecast again uh, for tonight across parts of the Plain States and the Midwest, but. I kind of feel sorry, but that's what that's what the forecast is uh, saying. So anyway, let's go over let's go over some of the tornado reports that uh, parts of uh, the Tulsa area had seen so far today, and uh, so far just to the uh, about three miles east of Sperry, Oklahoma. Just like and this is outside of Tulsa, this is like the suburb of the city. A uh, storm spotter reported of a, a brief tornado touchdown. So it looks like this tornado m- might have been weaker when it uh, hit that uh, little small community near the Tulsa area earlier this afternoon, or to say this evening, rather, because this, this was reported just after 6 o'clock, uh, which is Central Time, which is which is the same time zone like we are in right now. So just keep that in mind. Also, another report of a tornado east of Tulsa. This is about two miles southeast of Catuso. There's been a report of, uh, well, actually, this is a report from a storm spotter. They reported uh, of, uh, of a tornado that was near the Creek Turnpike and Highway 412. And, of course, the spotter said the tornado was crossing the highway. So, yeah, that's a... Uh, Another report uh, of a tornado there. No reports of any damage with that, I don't think. I think there's some damage, but I don't see any damage reports uh, on the map here on the Barron Threat Net uh, radar. But that could come out here pretty soon. Also, also another report of a tornado up here just to the way to the northeast side of Tulsa. Uh, a storm spotter actually uh, shot a picture on Twitter of a tornado up this was reported by Ham Radio um, as well, not from the Storm Spotter, but also from the, the Ham Radio operators. This is just about five miles southwest of Welsh, Oklahoma. Again, this is way just to the northeast uh, part of Tulsa, where there, like I said, uh, there are where there have been reports of several tornadoes uh, earlier this afternoon and this evening. And of course, there's another one here just to the southeast of Tulsa. Uh, there was a report, there's been a report of another brief touchdown earlier near the uh, Haskell area, about two miles northeast of town. Also, a couple reports of tornadoes down here, basically in southeast Oklahoma. This is located way to the east of Oklahoma City, it's just right along the I-40 corridor. I believe this is where uh, the uh, chase is reported of a big, violent tornado on the ground. Uh, this is over in uh, about, about, about a mile north of Cromwell. So about a mile north of Cromwell and uh, just to the east of Oklahoma City. Also, uh, in, in, and also near the Okima area. So, again, you see where there's a, so the, so those four uh, tornado reports right here. Uh, that's just the east of the, to the east of Oklahoma City. Sorry, I can't even talk here tonight. Uh, that's just right along the I-40 corridor and ports on to the north. That's where there have been reports of uh, of some uh, violent tornadoes uh, spotted by uh, live storm chasers from local live television, either in Tulsa or in OKC. So that's why. And there's other reports of tornadoes up here across parts of uh, northeastern Oklahoma as well. One, one that's right here near the Kansas State line, I believe, if I'm not, mis- if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, that was correct here. This was reported just before 7.30 this evening. This is over in about, th- about three miles north and northwest of Commerce, Oklahoma, where a spotted report of a large confirmed tornado on the ground. So, yeah, that's why that, again, the plains and parts of the Midwest are dealing with, a, like I said, another tornado outbreak uh, tonight. So again, this is because there's a, this is a second this is the second system that's developing, uh, that you know from late this afternoon and this evening. So, yeah, like I said, if we have if we have any friends or families that live in either in Northwest Texas, Oklahoma, Southeast Kansas, or Missouri, again, please give them a phone call or send them a text and let them know that uh, that they need to stay safe out there due uh, due to another another threat of severe weather. They'll be impacting the same areas that got hit pretty hard from the uh, first round of storms uh, yesterday and also from Monday. So yeah, it's been, it's been really a wild it's been really a wild week so far of severe weather across parts of the United States and of course even the heat wave uh, across parts of the southeast and also the snow in Denver. 
So yeah, lots of lots of crazy weather has been happening so far this month. No doubt, no doubt about that. So let me turn back on the Nashville radar and show you what's happening currently. Uh, what's, what's happening here at home? We'll give it. It'll give it just a second here to uh, load up the radar, and here we go. So let me turn back on the Nashville radar. And like I said, we're, we're, we're looking pretty dry right now from Middle Tennessee. So again, we don't expect any rain in the forecast uh, for tonight. And again, there's just a couple of isolated showers or sprinkles here up towards Kentucky, but nothing too major. So just keep that in mind. But let's look at the temperatures right now currently here in Middle Tennessee at this uh, uh, 8 p.m. hour. It's already, it's already 10 after 8 already. So temperatures still, still, well, still a little bit humid, but it's starting to cool down just a bit since, since the sun has already gone down just a little while ago. So right now in... Uh, <clears throat> Right now in Music City, we have a current temperature there around 83 degrees. Then we have uh, uh, 82 right now up in Gallatin. Uh, Clarksville is sitting around 82 degrees as well. Also up in Hopkinsville, you're seeing a temperature there around 80. Uh, Bowling Green, 80 degrees for you as well. And then Paris and Henry County are seeing a temperature there around 80 degrees uh, also. And down towards uh, uh, Franklin and Williamson County, temperature there is 83 in Murfreesboro. Also sitting around 83 degrees right now at this uh, 8 p.m. hour, and it's also 83 as well in Lebanon. Again, that's over in Wilson County. And the same thing for Columbia. So we got a few 83-degree 80, temperatures here, basically from Nashville points on to the south and a little due east at the moment. And we also got 80 right now in Lawrenceburg and also over towards the uh, plateau. If we pinpoint the temperatures there, it is 80 there in Cookville. We got uh, 79 right now in Crossville and over towards Jamestown and Fitzgerald County. Also, sitting at around 79 degrees as well. So mostly temperatures are in the are in the upper 70s, especially along the plateau and lower 80s elsewhere across the midstate at this uh, 8 p.m. hour. So again, still warm and, and a little bit humid, but again, temperatures start to cool down a little bit since the sun has gone down just about a about a half hour ago. So just, just that's why. So again, nothing too bad out there. So we have big plans this evening outdoors. Whether we're heading to maybe a movie or maybe out to Going out to a late dinner, you should be you should be okay. So we're not expecting any, any rain in the forecast here on this Wednesday night. So that's the good news. So let's take a look at future cast story we're expecting with temperatures for lows tonight and also for high temps as we get into the next few days to finish the rest of the work week and, and also to get you ready for the Memorial Day holiday weekend. So I'll give it just just a second here. And also, we'll give it just uh, just a second to uh, get future cast to uh, load up here. So just bear with me. So as we head into the overnight hours, we're expecting uh, temperatures to drop down mostly in the upper 60s into the lower 70s. I would say earlier this morning, some spots actually did hit low in the low 70s for the first time for low temperatures uh, uh, for 2019. We haven't seen any of low, uh, any 70 plus degree temperatures for lows uh, this year. But this was was the it was the first time that some spots last night seen. Uh, temperatures uh, for lows that warm. So that was surprising. And again, summer is coming up here right around the corner. So those high temperatures are going to be uh, getting pretty, are going to, are going to get pretty warm and a little bit uh, humid uh, for low temperatures, like in the 60s and 70s. Uh, again, so just keep that in mind. Also, but look at the temperatures here for morning lows here. This is 5 o'clock in the morning as you wake up. We're talking about temperatures mostly in the mid to upper 60s and to the lower 70s. But look at Nashville. I just want to show a morning glow temperature around 74 uh, as as we wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and about around 66 for the for the morning glow te morning glow temperature tomorrow up in uh, Gallatin, uh, 69 for the morning glow temperature tomorrow in uh, Lebanon, 68 for Murfreesboro, same thing for Franklin, about 66 66 for the uh, morning glow temperature uh, tomorrow morning in Columbia and about around 63, a little cooler for Lawrenceburg, but still staying stay, staying pretty mild. Uh, for you folks uh, down there, and about 74 for the morning glow temperature tomorrow in Paris, and about 70 for Hopkinsville, and 71 for Bowling Green. But as we continue to uh, uh, to for uh, to, as, we, as we get as we continue to uh, forward the future cast here to the afternoon tomorrow, it looks like I'm a little too far here. This thing up here. So here's the high temperatures, and you can see all the reds here. You see on the map here. That's in the case we can see how, that, that that indicates that we're going to see high temperatures, uh, very hot and humid. We're talking about mostly upper 80s into the lower 90s. Like for Nashville, it's going to show a high temperature tomorrow around 90. Same thing for Gallatin. Same story for Murfreesboro. And about 83 for the current temp or actually for the high temperature tomorrow, rather, for uh, Crossville. So it could be a little bit cooler, but uh, it's, still going to, it's still going to stay. It's still going to feel like summer out there. So please take it easy if you, if you have to be outdoors uh, tomorrow all day long, whether if you're working out in your property, like mowing the yard, or just um, whatever you're doing around your property, just uh, 
just keep just take it easy out there. Again, always be sure to take breaks at times and drink plenty of water uh, if you can. And remember, for those of you that are over 21, do uh, always always avoid alcohol because alcoholic beverages will not be good uh, to drink. You know, in the in outside of the heat because that's part of like we'll call it the dehydration. So you you don't want that to happen. You don't want to dehydrate yourself. So that's why it will be better just to drink water or types of sport drinks if you're going to be uh, working outside in the heat uh, tomorrow because you need to keep yourself uh, hydrated. All right, we're going to we're going to wait for future cast to get lit up again. So temperatures will still continue to stay pretty humid by tomorrow evening, still in the upper 80s since it's possible around 90 degrees. So Nashville, so you you may, you may see a temperature you may see a temperature tomorrow evening around 90 to about 89 for Gallatin, 87 in Lebanon. At about around 89 for Murfreesboro, so yeah, still, still going to feel pretty hot and humid by the time as we get into the evening commute uh, tomorrow. As we forward the, the clock here to uh, uh, tomorrow night, we're talking about low temperatures dropping down into the upper 60s and into the lower 70s. So again, another warm night and another warm uh, Friday morning ahead for Middle Tennessee. And again, we don't expect a whole lot of rain in the forecast for the rest of this week and even into the holiday weekend. So just want to let you know about that. But look at the temperature here. This is 3 a.m. Friday morning. Talk about a morning glow temperature around 76 for Music City, 68 for Gallatin, 69 for Clarksville early Friday morning, 70 for Hopkinsville, 72 up in Bowling Green, and about 68 for the morning glow temperature uh, Friday for uh, Paris, uh, 66 for the morning glow temperature on uh, Friday for pa or not Paris, uh, Franklin, uh, 68 for Columbia, and about 67 uh, early Friday morning for the low temperature in Lawrenceburg. So, yeah. It's going to be another, it's not just tonight we're going to see another warm and humid uh, night, but we're going to see another round coming our way as we head into uh, tomorrow night and early Friday morning. Because like I said, there's a big high pressure that is building, building in from the southeast that gets, that's bringing a lot of uh, heat and humidity that's bringing, you know, not, not a whole lot of rain uh, across much of the southeast. So just the heat and humidity that's uh, going to be the big concern as we head into the rest of this week and even into the holiday weekend and perhaps even part of next week. Potentially, so just keep that in mind. All right, as we forward this clock here to uh, Friday afternoon, it looks like we'll see temperatures, same thing. Again, we'll be in the mid to upper 80s and possibly some spots in the lower 90s. So again, we're, we're expecting the weather to, to continue to stay pretty hot and humid as we head into uh, that day. So if, like I said, if you've got, you got big plans uh, on Friday besides work, uh, especially outdoors. Again, please be sure, again, take it easy out there in the heat. Because, again, uh, we're, we, may, we, may not, we may not get a, re we may not get a, a relief from the heat uh, anytime soon, at least. It may not, may not be until late next week. We may get a little bit of relief from, from the hot weather, but we'll look at the GFS here in just a second, and we'll see what, uh, what it has to say. So let me turn off uh, the point queries, turn off the temperature map, feature cast. Back on the radar. So, so let's look at the GFS here for the next 16 days. We're going to start with Saturday. So this is the first half for the uh, the Memorial Day holiday weekend. So it looks like we'll see uh, the weather uh, staying dry for the most part. So we'll look at the 24-hour precipitation uh, product. Uh, it's possible that some spots could see maybe a couple of isolated showers. But again, for the most part, we should be staying rain-free. Uh, so you can see all the south. Like I see, like I said, much of the southeast again looking uh, pretty hot and humid, but with with, with uh, not a whole lot, not a whole lot of rain to worry uh, to uh, happen as we head into the holiday weekend. So it looks like the best chance of rain and thunderstorms will stay up to the north and west up here. So from St. Louis points on to the north to Kansas City, Wichita, Topeka, Oklahoma City, back down towards Am Amarillo and Lubbock, Texas, and back over towards the Great Lakes region. There, there could, there could be could be really a, a little bit of a soaker. So the, so, the, so the weather up there could be really unsettled as we head into the first half of the uh, holiday weekend. Uh, so if you're planning on traveling, whether whether be heading to uh, St. Louis or Indianapolis, Chicago, Grand Rapids, or Detroit, Milwaukee, Oklahoma City, Wichita, or Amarillo, Texas, over the holiday weekend, just be aware that there could be a potential for some flight delays due because because of these uh, thunderstorms that may try to develop with the uh, this could be potential of system number three that may try to form as we head into um, Saturday. But if, you, but if you can be staying here in Middle Tennessee, it looks like the weather should be looking pretty dry, except there will be a couple of showers. But for the most part, we're, we're, we're going to be dealing with the heat and humidity, not just for us here, but across, but across much of the entire southeast U.S. also. 
So a uh, high temperature is, uh, like I said, uh, looks to be in the upper 80s into the lower 90s. But again, look at these temperatures. Again, this is what I'm talking about right here. So down towards Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and parts of Florida, looking at high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s with some spots potentially up into the triple digits. Yeah, that's going to be really a hot one from under the southeast uh, as we head into the first half of the holiday weekend. So if you're planning on traveling to the beaches uh, for, the, for the Memorial Day holiday weekend, whether you're heading to uh, Jacksonville, uh, Panama City Beach, Birmingham, Atlanta, uh, Savannah, Georgia, or to South Carolina, please take it easy being outside in the heat. And if you remember, uh, please always drink plenty of water and also try to find some cooler, shady spots to take breaks at times if you can. And remember... And this happens all the time. This happens all the time here. Like just uh, earlier today, uh, there, were, there was a little toddler over up in, or actually down in Jacksonville, Florida, that uh, died earlier today uh, after being left after being left inside alone in a hot van at a daycare parking lot. That's that's the that's the part that gets me so frustrated all the time. And this happens every summer. I mean, it continues to happen. Again, if you're a parent or if you're a guardian. Again, please, please don't even don't even think about leaving your child or your pet inside a hot vehicle so like 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 right before you before you um go into the store or go to the beach or whatever uh and before you lock your doors in your car always be sure to always check the back like the like the back side of the car just to make sure you don't have a pet or your child uh uh it, that's uh, left inside because again if you do that, that's gonna cause that's gonna cause a heat stroke and of course they could die and of course you if you're a parent or a guardian, you might get in trouble for uh, for leaving that your for leaving your kid or your pet inside a hot vehicle. So please, please follow those rules here, folks. Because again, this happens every time, and this continues to happen. Like earlier today, about that, uh, uh, like that toddler that uh, that died from the heat stroke uh, in Jacksonville, being left alone inside that uh, hot van. So please don't do that. And again, here's the precipitation type value. So again, here's those uh, thunderstorms that will happen for the first half of the holiday weekend. Again, they'll be affecting from areas just to the north of St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, Chicago, into Indianapolis. But in terms of severe weather, uh, yeah, some storms could turn strong to severe across parts of the Midwest region and the Great Lakes uh, ahead of a system, a system number three that could potentially develop as we head into um, Saturday. So, yeah. All right, as we head into um, Sunday, as we kick off the second half of the holiday weekend, uh, the weather for much of the southeast, including for us in the, in the mid-state, we're looking pretty dry with uh, lots of sunshine. So all this unsettled weather here will stay up to the north of us here. So that's going to bring the big chance for showers and thunderstorms from Wichita to Topeka uh, to um, uh, Lubbock, Amarillo to Oklahoma City, all the way up towards the Ohio Valley region into the northeast. Again, they're, 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 they're going to be dealing with a uh, big soak of heavy rain and some storms. Over the holiday weekend. So if, again, if you're planning on traveling up to uh, up to the north or just to the west uh, to see your friends and families uh, that day, uh, again, again, you may be aware that there could be some storms that could interrupt the holiday weekend. But if you'll be staying in Middle Tennessee or in the southeast, we don't have to worry about any rain. But the biggest concern will be will only just be the heat and humidity. So just uh, keep that on the note. So here's the high temperatures we're expecting for Sunday. Again, we'll be in the upper 80s into the lower 90s, and still. Phew, Again, talking about those hot temperatures here in the southeast. So again, Orlando, Jacksonville, Tam or, yeah, Tampa, uh, Panama City Beach, Pensacola, Birmingham, all across much of the deep southeast here are dealing with those temperatures. Again, this is a this could be a potential of a major heat wave that can happen over the holiday weekend for much of the deep southeast United States region that could uh, bring temperatures in the mid to upper 90s with some spots in the triple digits. And, and heat index temperatures could be in the triple digits uh, as well. So I will I have a funny feeling that they're going to have to issue some heat advisories or, or excessive heat warnings uh, for much of the southeast United States region as we head into the holiday weekend. But at least we don't, we don't deal with any 100 degree plus temperatures here for Middle Tennessee for the weekend, which is certainly a little bit of good news, but still going to feel, still going to feel pretty hot and humid. So again, please take it easy being outside. If you're, if you're going to be uh, playing outside, you know whether it's going, you know, hanging out in the pool under your back porch of your house or going to Nashville Shores. So again, what are you doing outside this weekend? Just, just again, just be safe out. Just be, be safe uh, outside, and just take it easy. <clears throat> so here's the precipitation type values. So this is Sunday, 
And again, looks like, like I said, the best chance of showers with the, uh, showers and thunderstorms will stay up to the north of here. So from Kansas City to St. Louis, all the way up towards the northeast, they're expecting maybe a threat for some strong to severe storms. If we look at the instability, yeah, that was correct. So yeah, so it looks like there could be a, a there, could, there could be a good, uh, ugh, I'm talking too fast here. There could be a good threat of some severe storms uh, from Texas all the way up towards the Midwest and to the Northeast United States region as we head into, again, this is Sunday. This is the second half of the holiday weekend. But again, for us in Middle Tennessee and much of the entire Southeast, we should be looking dry, but dealing with the, but we're still going to deal with those hot and humid conditions that we need to, uh, that we need to be aware of. All right. As we head into Memorial Day Monday, uh, May 27th, it looks like uh, most of Middle Tennessee should be able to stay dry, uh, except there could be a few isolated showers in some locations across parts of our viewing area, but for the most part, we should be looking okay. So again, the big concern is, is just the heat and humidity that will continue, not just for tomorrow, Friday, or Saturday and Sunday, but, uh, but it will continue for Memorial Day Monday. And all those good chances of showers and thunderstorms will stay up to the north and west of here. So, well, so there's, so as of right now, there's not a relief, there, there's not going to be relief for at least for the next few days, or several days rather, from the heat. And here's the high temperatures we're expecting yet again for, for Memorial Day Monday. We're expecting to be in the upper 80s into the low 90s. And we can see some, some spots could hit maybe mid 90s also over the, over the Memorial Day Monday as well. But the biggest concern, well, actually the biggest heat wave is going to be down towards the southeast of here. So again, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida is going to be the, it's going to be the, the hottest states that are going to deal with a major heat wave as we head into the holiday weekend, including for Memorial Day Monday. So it looks like, uh, so again, here's the precipitation type value. So again, there could be some scattered on and off uh, showers or thunderstorms. This will be a little bit of summer, into a summer pattern, uh, all the way from Louisville up towards Indianapolis to Chicago, all the way up towards Minneapolis. But in terms of severe weather, uh, yes, with these similar type thunderstorms during the heatings of the day across parts of the Ohio Valley and parts of the Midwest, yes, some could turn strong to severe. But again, we don't, we don't have, but again, we don't, we're not dealing with any, uh, like any major rain, uh, concerns for the holiday weekend for Middle Tennessee and also for much of the Southeast. So again, like I said a little while ago in this video, it may not be until later next week when we, when we may see a very good chance for some rain that could bring a cold front that could, uh, really cool down temperatures, which will get, which will get a relief, really, which that will, which that will, uh, potentially, it, God, I'm talking too fast here again. <laughs> Bear with me. Again, that could potentially uh, give give us a little break from the heat as we head into late next week if we do get those storms. But we'll, we'll have to look at the, uh, the the GFS runs here for the next uh, at least as we head into the later part of next week in just a second. So just uh, hang on, just hang tight. All right, as we head into uh, Tuesday of next week, May 28th, uh, looks like uh, the weather, same thing, the day after Memorial Day, looks like we'll be looking pretty dry, including for much of the southeast, so don't see a whole lot of rain to deal with uh, for the next several days. So all this uh, rain and thunderstorm chances are going to stay up to the north uh, as we head into the next several days to uh, end the work week and to, uh, as we get, and as we get ready to the, as, as we get ready to, to uh, start the holiday weekend, and of course to start the new work week next week as well. And uh, high temperatures, yet again, again, still looks to stay pretty hot and humid, still in the upper 80s into the low to perhaps even mid-90s as we head into uh, Tuesday of next week. So this is a week from yesterday. And still, this major heat wave continues for the southeast the day after Memorial Day. Talking about temperatures in the mid to upper 90s into triple digits from Georgia to South Alabama to much of the Florida Panhandle region, including Jacksonville, which is located in the northern part of the, of the uh, peninsula. And, a, and across much of South Carolina, again, looking at some pretty, pretty decent, uh, impressive uh, hot conditions uh, to happen, happen for the next several days to end the month of May for the deep southeast. And again, here's the precipitation type ice. So again, this could be a potential of our next cold front that could try to slide down to the southeast into middle Tennessee as we hand into late next week. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll, we'll, we're going to look at the uh, next uh uh, run here for Wednesday and Thursday of next week in just a second, but that, but that could bring a few showers or thunderstorms here across parts of the uh, the Midwest into the Great Lakes region, so from Chicago to Indianapolis and to Milwaukee and to uh, Kansas City, Oklahoma City. Yeah, some storms could turn strong, and maybe some could turn severe. Again, this will, this will be a, this will be like a summer typical pattern, is what it seems like according to the GFS as we head into uh, Tuesday of next week, and of course even on, even on the on, uh, on uh, Memorial Day Monday, again, I can't even, can't even talk here tonight. I don't know why, but 
Sometimes this happens, this happens to me. But again, just bear with me. All right, as we head into a week from today, uh, Wednesday, May 29th, it looks like uh, a few pop-up isolated showers and maybe a couple of thunderstorms could try to pop, uh, could try to form basically just in the northeast of Nashville as we head into that day. But right now, the best chance of storms will stay over towards the west and northwest of here. So from Oklahoma City to uh, Dallas and to um, St. Louis, all the way up towards Indianapolis, that could bring a very, very high chance for showers. Uh, high, well, actually, a high coverage chance for uh, showers and thunderstorms with this uh, third system. As we head into the middle of next week, and uh, high temperatures uh, yet again looks to be again this, this could be potential of our next uh, cold front that could try to slide into Middle Tennessee by later uh, next week to in the month of May. But still, again, temperatures are going to still stay pretty hot and humid in the upper 80s into the lower 90s uh, for us as we head into a week from today, and uh, also. Still, the southeast, again, from Alabama all the way down towards Florida and much of the east coast, again, still looking pretty, pretty hot and humid, still still dealing with that major heat wave to continue as we head into uh, midweek uh, next week. And here's the instability. So with this uh, with this uh, third system, the, these storms could produce uh, a few severe storms across parts of Oklahoma to Texas, all the way over, over towards the Ohio Valley region to the northeast. But I think for now we're just going to call this the lane of voodoo because this is just, this is just about only a week away, and you know things may change as we get uh, closer. So please just keep that on the note. All right, as we head into a week from tomorrow, uh, Thursday, May thirtieth. Uh, so it seems like uh, this is when this is when our next, at least the next best chance for showers and storms will arrive to Middle Tennessee ahead of our next uh, front that could uh, slightly. Uh, Get us the relief from the heat. Potentially, as we head into late next week and maybe into the first weekend of June, but we'll have to wait and see what happens here because this is just about a week away. But again, that's going to bring our next chance for some, uh, at least the best chance of showers and thunderstorms uh, that day. And this is next Thursday, May 30th. And uh, high temperatures for us looks to be, like I said, cooling down just a little bit as this next front approaches. That can uh, cool down into the upper 70s and to the lower 80s. But still, the southeast, still that old man. Heat wave will still not go away anytime soon. So, the, so it looks like the major heat wave is going to continue, not just for this week or the holiday weekend, but it may continue maybe even until all of next week to end the month of May. Again, th again, that could bring temperatures in the mid to upper 90s into the triple digits from Jacksonville to Valdosta, Georgia, all the way over, up towards the Mid-Atlantic region. Yeah. And that's because there's a big high pressure that's going to be sitting for a while. So, Yeah. And in terms of severe weather with this uh, next uh, big system that could potentially move into Middle Tennessee next Thursday, uh, some storms could turn strong to severe. Uh, but again, this is just only about a week away. And again, remember, things could change as we get closer. But again, we'll have, we'll, we'll have to watch uh, next Thursday's uh, forecast carefully because that's going to that's bring our potential of our next cold front that could potentially slightly cool down temperatures. And, and that means we could, get, we could potentially get a relief from the heat and humidity as we hand it to that day as well. So, but again, it's just too early to go into details, so we'll have to wait and see what happens as we get uh, closer. And it looks like the rain will continue as we head into uh, next Friday. This is May 31st, the final day for the month. Uh, so more storms will continue from Middle Tennessee as the system continues to slide down from the northwest to the southeast. And it looks like some showers could try to develop across parts of the uh, Plain States. There, these, would be, these would be like cooler showers. That's what it seems like behind the front. But also, uh, looks like a tropical development could try to develop here across parts of the Gulf of Mexico region, is what it seems like as we head into the 31st of May as well. And remember, hurricane season for the Atlantic begins next Saturday, June 1st, so please keep that in mind. So, so, so we could watch this uh, potential development uh, as well as we head into the last day of May, which is uh, next Friday, and also to start the first weekend of June. And uh, high temperatures for us, again, looks to be slightly cooler in the low to mid 80s, again, we're going to get a relief from this uh, not, from those 90 plus degree temperatures, but still, still, still a major heat wave is going to continue from much of the southeast. So Florida, Georgia, the East Coast, and much of the deep south, again, still looking at those high temperatures in the 90s and triple digit uh, heat to continue. So that's why that the heat wave will not uh, go away anytime soon for a while to uh, finish the rest of this month for much of this for much of the uh, deep south and much of the deep southeast United States uh, region. 
And uh, it looks like the severe threats are pushed off towards the east of I-65, but I-65, what it seems like, as we hand it to next Friday as well. So we need to watch that uh, closely. Again, this is head, this is head of our next uh, front that could slightly cool down our temperatures uh, as we end the month of May and to the start the month of June. So again, let's wait and see what happens. But again, this is land of voodoo. We're going to say this for right now because this is just only one week away. And that may change as we get uh, closer yet again. All right, as we head into uh, next Saturday, the first day of June. Again, like I said, this is the start of the Atlantic. There'll be the start of the Atlantic hurricane season that day. And it looks like, thank, I think finally Florida may see some rain and, and a good chance of storms uh, uh, for that day, if this is correct here. Because I, I, I think Florida may need the rain and, and, and get a break from the uh, heat for a little bit. So I'll have to wait, I'll have to wait and see what happens here. But all this uh, moisture will push out down towards the, the, down towards the southeast. That could give a very, very good chance of storms, and that could give, get a relief from the heat. But for us here in Middle Tennessee, we should be looking dry and looking at uh, some sli slightly cooler weather. And much of the plains here also looks to be dry, except there could be a few storms with the new system that could try to develop across parts of the Texas and the Oklahoma uh, panhandle regions, even across parts of New Mexico and Colorado. And yet again, we'll be wa we're going to be watching this potential tropical tropical development here that could try to uh, form in the Gulf of Mexico region as we head into uh, the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Again, that starts on next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the first day of June. So just keep that in mind. And, uh, high temperatures, uh, again, again, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna like the temperatures as we head into the first day of June here. Looks like we'll be seeing temperatures slightly cooler into the upper 70s into the lower 80s. So if you're wanting some cooler weather for a while and want to break from the night, from the 90 plus degree heat temperatures, I think there's a chance, but again, it's too early to go, to de to go into details, but uh, we'll wait and see what happens. That's why this is land of voodoo. We're going to say this for right now because this is just only a week off, and things could change as we get closer. But look at these temperatures across much of the, the Great Lakes region. Looking at high temperatures in the 50s and 60s. It's going to be really a very cool start to the month of June uh, for, the, for, part, for these areas that are here up to the north. And uh, with the, with these uh, thunderstorms here down towards the southeast, uh, it looks like they're going to they're gonna, looks like they'll be limiting the chance for some severe weather uh, for parts of Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Florida as they as the storms do roll in as we head into uh, next Saturday. But uh, again, it's lane of voodoo, so things could change as we get closer. But at least for Middle Tennessee, the weather should be looking dry uh, for that day. But if you if you're gonna be if you're gonna be in Florida or if you're gonna be in Georgia or the Carolinas. Maybe for maybe a beach summer vacation uh, next weekend. Next weekend, uh, I think there's a chance that temperatures may start to uh, slightly cool down and get and may get may get a relief from the heat as these storms do roll in uh, that day. So we'll wait and see what happens. Let's see, it's already eight thirty eight. All right, as we check into the real pure land of Voodoo country now, this is for um, Sunday, June 2nd. Still, more rain continues uh, down towards Florida. So, again, uh, so it looks like next week it could be the good, could be the good weekend that, that some rain could, that, that uh, the rain could enter much of the state of Florida and parts of much of the southeast United States region and trying to get a break from this uh, uh, heat and humidity. But here in Middle Tennessee, again, looking pretty dry to start off the first weekend of June. But it looks like a new system could try to develop across parts of the Plain States that could give a couple of chance for showers and thunderstorms. If this is correct, and uh, high temperatures for us looks to be again slightly cooler in the uh, it looks like it looks like it looks like we could be in the seventies to near eighty degrees uh, for the for the day on Sunday, June second. If this is correct, but temperatures will stay pretty warm uh, down towards the south here, including Florida. Still, still see some nineties on the map, but again, as these storms do, as these storms may potentially roll into the state of Florida and parts of this, parts of deep parts of the deep southeast next weekend, again that could really cool down it. Those temperatures from the 90s in, into the 80s. So we'll, 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 we'll have to wait and see what happens. And again, here's the instability. So, like I said, with this uh, new system that could develop here on Sunday, June 2nd, that could form the actually actually that could bring the potential for a few strong to severe storms from the Texas Panhandle and across parts of uh, Kansas to Nebraska, all the way up towards South Dakota. But again, this is two weeks away, so things, like I said, may change. As we get uh, closer, so we'll have to wait and see what happens then. All 
All right, as we hand it to the uh, morning of Tuesday, June 4th, still more rain continues for the floor, for the state of Florida. But look at this here. It looks like another tropical development could try to form across parts of the Gulf of Mexico region that could bring a lot of moisture, at least a lot of tropical moisture down in Florida that could bring some pretty decent heavy rains and some thunderstorms uh, for as we as we kick off the uh, the, the uh, first week of June. I mean, that's not next week, but the following week. And it looks like there could be some storms here across parts of the uh, Midwest region as well, from St. Louis to Kansas City to Chicago to the Great Lakes region. So, yeah, you name it. So, like, like I said, the weather patterns have gone so crazy th- so far this, uh, this, this week and, of course, even this month as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if the weather patterns get really crazy for this summer. So let's wait and see what happens as well. And uh, here's the morning globe temperatures we're expecting uh, for Tuesday morning. The fourth year looks like we'll be in the 50s and 60s uh, as we head into, uh, like I said, this is the morning for Tuesday, June 4th. It looks like we could see temperatures uh, pretty warm for much of the southern plains. They're only in the 70s into the low 80s potentially uh, for those, like, like I said, for parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Here's the precipitation type values. Again, like I said, there could be a good chance of some thunderstorms here across parts of the Midwest and across of the Plain states. But in terms of severe weather, uh, yeah, a few storms could turn strong to severe, but it seems that's what it seems like uh, for cross parts, from, especially, on, especially on the I-70 corridor from St. Louis to Kansas City into, uh, uh, we'll say, to Topeka, Kansas. But again, this is Lane of Voodoo, so this is two weeks away, so things, as always, could change. It could change, folks, as we get closer. All right, as we head into the uh, morning of uh, Thursday, June the 6th, it looks like uh, still, again, here's that big uh, tropical low here that could still try to uh, uh, move, that will still, 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 excuse me, I'm, again, I'm talking too fast here, again, again, bear with me. Yeah, I just want to show that tropical low here down around parts of Florida could still try to form, even across parts of the Gulf of Mexico region as well. Uh, again, this is the morning of Thursday, June the 6th here, and it seems like there could be another good chance of showers and thunderstorms here for a bunch of the plain states here. But for us, Middle Tennessee looks to stay pretty dry is what it seems like as we head into, like I said, this is the morning of Thursday, June 6th. This is the 6th run, we call, we call it. And uh, morning glow temperatures looks to be pretty mild, looks to be back into a summer-like uh, pattern where we see morning glow temperatures uh, in the summer in the 60s and 70s. So, yeah, that's going to feel pretty, like I said, pretty warm and humid. As we head into the morning of Thursday, June 6th, and here's the precipitation type values. So here, or actually, let's, 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 let's look at the instability. So so here's the instability. So again, it shows how much field of severe weather that could form across parts of the Plain states. And yes, uh, some storms could turn strong to severe across parts of the uh, Plain states as we head into the morning of Thursday, June 6th. Uh, but again, this is land of voodoo, so things could change. It could change, folks, as we get uh, closer. So please keep that on the note. And as we end this uh, forecast here for tonight, this is for uh, Friday, the 7th of June. The first Friday for the month of June looks like we'll see is uh, mostly dry weather for the most part for Middle Tennessee, except there could be a few showers that could try to develop here across parts of the uh, northwestern counties of Middle Tennessee. But right now, the big, the big chance of rain is going to stay up to the north of us. That's what it seems like with, with some thunderstorms possible from Missouri all the way up towards the northern, the northern Plains states and the Great Lakes. And still, that tropical low will still continue for parts of the uh, the Atlantic and across, and across parts of Florida as well. And uh, high temperatures uh, down below that looks to be, uh-oh, looks like it looks like some heat and humidity will, uh, humidity will, will return for much, for much of the United States region except for the Northwest as we head into uh, June 7th. That could bring hot, uh, some very hot temperatures in the upper 80s into the lower 90s and also some mid 90s here down towards the deep south. So yeah, that's why summer is almost, it's almost here folks. Again, you folks need to be prepared for the summer heat as it gets closer. And uh, here's the precipitation type guys. Again, so it looks like the best chance of storms will stay of storms will stay up to the northern plains here, up towards the Dakotas into Nebraska, and a couple of summer storms could try to form across parts of the Ohio Valley region too. But in terms of severe weather. Uh, with these th- with these uh, summer type storms here across parts of the uh, Midwest here, like the Ohio Valley, yeah, like I said, some storms could turn strong to severe, and there could be a, a few strong to severe storms across parts of the northern plain states as well. But again, this is two weeks off, so we call this the land of voodoo. Anyway, well, that, anyway, well, that's it for this uh, forecast video update on this uh, Wednesday evening. I'll be back uh, first thing early tomorrow morning if I do get up on time at seven o'clock for the next edition. So hope you could join me uh, live on Facebook then. 
and I'll continue as as always as always by posting more notes or updates on my blog and uh, Facebook pages so uh, 24/7. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Have a great evening and God bless.